So now we're going to put the belts back on. Um, start with the timing shaft dot lined up with the slot on the crankcases and the cam pulleys. The horizontal, because this is horizontal top dead center firing, there's no load in the horizontal cam here. If there's load in the vertical cam, it spins to here and then it stops and you have to force it around to get it to there. Sometimes they will sit because that is about the nose of the inlet lobe. So you can sort of get it to sit there. Put the belt on. These ones, you've got to fight the belts past the edge of the adjusters. The later adjusters are much nicer. Put the belt on there. And away you go. You can also turn the engine over so this dot is here, which is about three o'clock if you like, and that's vertical top that's in a firing, and you spin this so this is down here, and put the belt on that way. Um, but once the belts are on, we'll just pull that tension up a little bit. Put the horizontal belt on as well so you can see that done. Horizontal is easy. Try to snip them up, put them on, and now you turn the engine over. The first turn, do it very slowly in case it does anything's going to hit anything. If it does stop, it will just stop. So you just turn it over and it'll just go and stop. If you're turning it very gently, it's no big deal at all. It'll be a piston hitting a valve. <clears throat> so you just turn the engine over gently. Usually it stops about here somewhere if you've got this cam one tooth advanced. But if it gets all the way around and the dots all still line up, then I usually do it a bit quicker. And I'll normally turn it over 10, 15, 20 times, just let the belts settle into where they want to run. Some people put belts on without turning the engine over, adjust it, call it done. I don't ever do that. Um, in my experience, if you do that, the belts will appear to get very loose very quick. Um, so you want to have them spin so they settle in a bit and bring it back around to the marks. Once again, this is top dead centre horizontal firing. So at that, we, we set the tension on the horizontal belt. And the way I tension all the two valve belts is just by feel generally. And you just pull these together. I might use a thinner tool. These ones are a bit annoying because the belts sit right over the adjusters. But just pull them together. There's not a lot, there's no real force. And you can just move the belt down. It's a five mil hex key. Slides through pretty easily. That's how I've always done it on these engines. So I'm going to move the engine around now to the vertical top dead center firing to set the tension on the vertical belt. You set the tension in this belt now because the, there's load on the camshaft. This side's pulled very tight, this side's loose. So it doesn't give you an accurate tension. So let's turn it over to top dead center, which is about there. On the later pulleys, they have four holes and it's the second hole that way. But this being an earlier square tooth pulley engine, it's only got two holes. So you sort of have to guess a little bit, but you know where it is. And again on this one, Make sure both your adjuster screws are pretty loose and just push it over. Don't get too carried away force-wise. Again, you should be able to get that through pretty easily. Sometimes do it a couple of times just to make myself feel like I'm doing it right. Oops, got a bit loose. But this is just purely a feel thing and when you're happy sometimes tightening the pivot bolt can change it a little bit but I always talk the sliding adjuster bolts first okay. I'm 
can do those to 25 Newton meters. So start with that one. And then this one. Okay, tight. It's much easier to access the, the uh, tightening screws in the later models. So they're done. On the later engines, you often use a, uh, a sonic belt tensioning method. I use an iPhone for that. Uh, this one might not match up with the numbers that we want, but this is how I've always done these engines, is just by feel. I'll turn it over a few more times. It has got oil in it, so it's not going to pump oil out anywhere, I don't think. Okay. There's two iPhone apps that I use. One is the Gates Carbon Drive app. Um, it tends to give a little bit lower reading than the other app I use, but it's one by Gates, it should be accurate. You just hold the microphone down to this run of the belt. This is Tommy Marks, so it's horizontal, top dead centre firing. We've got 136 hertz. Same thing again. These days, your Ducati, Ducati sort of say 110 on everything. Um, when they first went to the Sonic method, the two valve belts were around about 140 hertz. Uh, if you do a later DS engine to that, it will make a horrid noise when it gets hot. Um, but these engines, I, I, I never actually used the tension method on these engines, um, but that's about what I would expect to see. You know, something that would nominally be too tight. The other app I use is one called N-Track Tuner. It's a guitar tuning app. And with this, usually it's the lowest peak that you get. And it usually reads a bit higher. That would have been around about 140 hertz again. Um, this one I use because I calibrated it against the old um, low in a tool on the four valves, so I sort of know how it works, but there's no sort of absolute what it might be. The belts are really loose, you might get a few peaks that don't really they make it hard to actually sense where the belts are. Um, but this is also a little bit uh, more adaptable than the Gates carbon drive, which can sometimes give you a, a 35 hertz reading. When you, know, you know the belt's right, but you keep getting 35 hertz, it makes no sense. To do the vertical belt, we spin the engine over to vertical top dead centre firing, which is the dot about here. Then we measure on this run down here. We go back to the Gates app. I'm getting about 100 on this one. It can depend on how you flick it as well sometimes. Even about 90. Um, as I said, I just don't use the frequency method on these older two valves at all. I just do it by feel, and that's how I've always done it. So that's belts on and adjusted. They have been turned over a lot of times. That's what I like to do. That's the most important thing, I think, is to turn the belts over a lot of times before you actually do the adjustment. And now we can check the cam timing. 